is that we read that it was in a garden nearby. So you came from Skull Hill. Here's the garden. And I'll tell you why they say this was the garden. And then the tomb is right behind us where the wall is. So um, the Crusaders are the ones that found the tomb and uncovered it. Took their time um, cleaning it out, finding the tomb. But as they continued to um, look at this area, one of the things that they found was a wine press. Which you'll be able to see the wine press. It's actually right over this where this fence is. Um, the wine press that was here that signifies that this was a quote garden at one point in the fact that it grew grapes here on this property. Because they didn't do like we do today and haul them on trains and buses and blah blah blah, you know, to a plant. They um, would use their grapes right here and make um, their wine. So, the, as I said, the Crusaders uncovered the tomb. So this is what the tomb looked like in 1900s. They found it in the late 1800s, but this will give you a picture of what the tomb looks like. It looks like this today. The front of it still looks the same. They haven't done anything with the inside, except put up a gate to one portion. So um, when they talk about the garden and then going to the tomb, anybody know why it had to be a brand new tomb? <laughs> huh? To prophecy. Anybody else? You know what, after you come to Israel, hopefully everybody goes this way. When you go back and read the Bible, you kind of read it in a different way. Because you've seen some things and you're like, oh, I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. you know? So, um, just to give you a little background, in the Jewish um, tradition, using a tomb was much like, well, I know in the States we do this, and I don't know if you guys do this in Ireland. You get like a family plot where everybody's yeah. kind of buried in that same plot. Um, tombs were used back in those days, so they would have a family tomb. If you go back and read the story of Joseph, when Joseph met his brothers, you know, they brought his father to meet him in Egypt because he was um, head and giving out food to everybody that was starving. But when he passes, before he passes away, he tells his brothers, I want to be taken back home yeah. and buried in the family tomb. So when they buried people in their small family tombs, um, about a year, year and a half later, when all your flesh has decayed, a family member would go back into the tomb, would gather the bones, and they would put them in a box or a corner, so then there was space for the next body to be laid. Because you didn't want to just put bodies on top of bones and stuff, so you, it was the older person of the family's job to, to do that. I like to look at the scriptures and think, 
not only does I think it was prophecy, and I think, you know, because it was his son, he wanted a, uh, a very clean tomb to put his son, son in um, when he was crucified. But I also sat there and I think, you know, if there was bones from somebody else in that tomb, think about, they don't believe that Jesus yeah. rose from the dead already. Mm. And would they look at those bones and think, no, no. Or, you know, we have DNA today, so we may look at things very different. Maybe that's where my mind is. But, you know, they look for blood samples and stuff. And what if they didn't find them? But um, God had a perfect plan. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, he wanted that new tomb and wanted um, Joseph of Arimathea, who was on the Jewish council, goes and asks for Jesus' body. His Passover was coming, and he wants to take the body down off of the tomb. So then what happens? Stone gets put in front of the tomb. And I'm going to read a verse before we look at the, um, the actual what the tomb looks like. So Mark 16 says, when the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who's going to roll the stone away? When they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. And he said, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is a place that he laid. So when you think about that, um, one, I'll give you some additional information on the tomb of what it looks like. When the Crusaders found it, they expanded the door. The door would have been about half. And today, even if you're tall, you're still going to have to duck to get into it. Or you'll have a nice headache for the rest of the day. <laughs> so you're going to duck to get into it. But if you're in front of the tomb, when you go down and look at it, there'll be a track of what a stone would have rolled in. And I guess when I've read the passages before, I never thought about the stone rolled. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was a big stone that somebody pushed and how they pushed mm -hmm. it. I never thought about that. Yeah. But it actually rolled up here. When they uncovered the tomb, they did not find a stone. So they brought in a replica of what they think the stone would have looked like. So when you walk out of the tomb, if you look straight ahead, you'll see a big round circular stone that they think was probably something like what was used back in those days. When you go into the tomb, this is kind of what it's going to look like. It signifies a wealthy person because it has two chambers. The first chamber up here where you're going to be able to go today it's the chamber where the preparation would have taken place. So this is where Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mary Magdalene was going to come to dress the body with the spices that they were bringing. Mm. This is the place also where mourners would go. So people that knew Jesus could have come in here before they sealed the tomb to mourn his passing. And then the body would be placed back here in the back until the flesh decayed. And this tomb signifies a wealthy person because they say four to five people could have laid here in this tomb at one time. So this tomb was discovered in the late 1800s, and when they found it, this emblem was painted on the wall. Anybody have an idea what that means? Jesus Christ. The first and the last. Alpha and Omega are first and last. Yeah. The paint has been touched up a little bit just so we can keep that so people can see it. Um, but today, that's on the wall. Does it 100% prove that this is his tomb? No. We don't know who painted it there, but because it was there, they wanted to leave it there for everybody to see. So I want you to take a moment and think about the tomb, the garden, and where we're at. And just like think about why you're here in Israel, what you want to look at. Think about your life. Mm -hmm. If you were Mary, the mother of Jesus, or Mary Magdalene, and you came to the tomb that Sunday morning, you were going to dress it, you're carrying your spices, you're getting ready to walk into that tomb, what would you be thinking? What would your facial expression be when you saw that stone rolled away and you looked inside and saw that it was in there? It's hard to completely imagine what it, what you would have done because sometimes the shock, you know, we respond a little differently than what we think. But somebody painted this picture, and I love the picture because it shows several different reactions of what the ladies may have thought or their facial expressions looked like. And it's hard to know what you would look like. 
But today you get to visit, thank God, an empty tomb. Mm. Because of our sin and Jesus sending his son, we don't worship an empty tomb. We worship a risen God. Yeah. And so today, as we make our way down to the tomb, we have five or six people at a time going into the tomb. We ask you that you do not pose on the steps of the tomb and taking pictures. You can take pictures at the side. You can take pictures inside, but not in front of the door. Um, we ask you also to be quiet, if possible, because you don't know where each and every Thank you. 